Here's an interesting proposition. Is a service boot by definition American? If you look at this boot, you can see quite clearly that it is in a service boot pattern. But this boot is made in Italy with a soft crepe sole. So is it in fact a service boot? G'day, how you going? Welcome to my channel Bootlosophy. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Tech. In accordance with the millennia old cultural protocols of Australian First Nations peoples, let me first acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters that I live and work on, the Wajik people of the Noongar language group. Today, I'm taking a look at this pair of what I might call service boots made by Italian company Astorflex and called their Dowel Flex boot. Now, Astorflex call all of their models a name that ends with flex. So for example, I have already reviewed their Chelsea boot called the Bitflex, which you can see by uh, clicking on the link up there. Now, full disclosure, this pair of boots was provided to me by Huckberry for review, uh, but the video is not sponsored and I'm not really obliged to say anything other than that, uh, how I truly feel about these boots, good or bad. You should know though that I'm, I'm quite a fan of the brand Astorflex as I found them uh, very comfortable and casually stylish in the past. Let's see how these shape up to the others that I had from earlier. If you like the look and you like the review of them, you might want to take a look at them uh, on the website and I'll leave a link in the description uh, box below. This Dowel Flex boot definitely uses a service boot pattern, which is commonly associated with American heritage style boots. The Dowel Flex is quite different to the other six inch boot called the Boot Flex. I've also previously reviewed that boot and you can uh, watch that review up there in the corner. I can now see that the Boot Flex is in fact a Southern European work boot style used by farmers and shepherds in uh, Southern Europe, mainly Portugal, Spain, and Italy, and Central Europe. Uh, this Dowel Flex boot, on the other hand, is modeled after what I've been used to calling a service boot pattern. Here's the interesting thing. Are service boots actually American? European makers don't call similar boots service boots, and if they call them anything other than a derby boot for the opening, they probably call them ankle boots. And if, as an American, you really want to blow your mind, <laughs> jump outside your own borders and Google images for the trickers logger boot to see what the Brits think a logger boot looks like. <laughs> this Dowel Flex boot has a five inch shaft similar to a US Marine uh, boondocker style from World War II. And it's constructed with just three basic panels being the vamp piece and the two quarter pieces. The lined and ungusseted tongue uh, is sewn to the vamp piece and there is a single piece backstay up the middle. It has an interesting inner heel counter stitched into place uh, with a piece of suede on the inside of the boot. The toe box is a round, plain toe box and the whole set of uppers is set on top of a natural crepe rubber sole using the stitch down method of construction, which I'll get into when I talk about construction methods. Now, aesthetically, it's a very simple looking boot and because of the simplicity, is very attractive as an everyday casual boot. In this dark chestnut, uh, new buck leather that's slightly lightly oiled, the mid-brown color moves around as you walk uh, and flex the uppers. As such, I think it's a casual boot for casual, relaxed or uh, social occasions. I think the most appropriate outfits to go with this boot would be casual and relaxed. Uh, chino pants or jeans with a t-shirt, uh, a polo shirt or relaxed button-up shirt. For example, a pair of light wash jeans and then Oxford cloth button-down shirt with or without a jacket would give you the appropriate relaxed vibes. Or you could pair the boots with a pair of khaki chinos and a blue button-down shirt with a dark blue blazer and that would be suitable for a casual Friday in a professional office. You can also of course wear the boots with a pair of dark or mid-wash jeans and a simple t-shirt to go to a, a, a summer's barbecue or an afternoon at the pub. This is such a traditional looking boot and so casual with it that I'm pretty sure it would go with almost any outfit uh, as long as you get your colors right. 
stick to basic neutral colours like brown, blue, black, grey, white and olive green. Before we go on, let me just give you a brief description and history of the brand. Estorflex is an Italian company founded by the Travanzoli family in the 1890s in a small town that had a lot of family-run boot and shoemaking workshops. The company grew through the years, especially after the First World War, uh, uh, into an industrialised factory setup, and they continued making traditional stitch-down shoes from the same town. Today, the family ownership is into its sixth generation, and the current owners have embraced an eco-conscious mission to their bootmaking, ensuring that they use veg tanned leathers to avoid the chrome salt spillage, as well as natural rubber for their soles, uh, water-based dyes and non-solvent glues. They've had a partnership with Huckbury for about 10 years now and also make uh, loafers, Chelsea boots and chuckers, uh, all called something flex. When I've reviewed Esther Flex boots before, like uh, the brown flex chucker up there, uh, people have commented that as an Italian maker, it's not very refined. It's interesting, people from different countries seem to uh, travel a lot more than people from others and often it's people who have not travelled perhaps that expect Italian footwear to be all sophisticated uh, Gucci products when they see, which they see on their TV screens. In fact, Italy has a centuries-old tradition of making footwear for workers and peasants that have continued to develop into very functional, economical shoes and boots for relaxed, kick-around casual wear and light work wear. Now let me talk about the construction. As usual, I'll start from the bottom and I'll work my way up. At the bottom is this very soft crepe rubber sole. It's slightly over one centimetre thick and the very low block heel is also made of crepe rubber uh, and glued onto the outsole. This type of crepe sole is made of natural rubber. When I was a child, I spent some time in Malaysia living near a rubber plantation and I used to watch the liquid rubber being poured into curing trays, mixed with acids and then rolled through uh, rollers called crepiers, producing uh, sheets of this crepe rubber for storage and transport. This type of outsole is probably most famously used in Clark's Desert Boots. It is extremely soft and shock absorbing, however, can wear quite quickly and definitely picks up all sorts of uh, dirt and gravel and sand and anything else you care to mention. Within a couple of weeks walking around outdoors, this will look like a big black mess. If you don't mind that, it's a very practical outsole for a casual boot because of its grip and comfort. But being a bit unsightly, probably not great for a dressy occasion. Above the crepe rubber outsole is what looks like a leather midsole. Now, it could actually be made of leather board. It's a little less than a half a centimetre thick and feels quite firm without the uh, grainy bits that you often see on the edges of the, of the leather board. There is no shank that I'm aware of uh, and as a result it's actually very flexible and in fact not very stable if you flex it from side to side. Uh, the heel is actually very low. It's only about 25 millimetres tall and the height difference between your heel and the ball of your foot is only a drop of about 10 millimetres. As a result, the weight of your feet don't exert a great deal of pressure into that gap between the heel and the ball of the foot. The inside of the boot is also very flat and so for someone like me with slightly collapsed arches, uh, while it's a very comfortable boot to lounge around in, it would probably begin to feel painful under the arches if I stood around for too long in it. I have had to insert a heel lift in order to make sure that I have uh, enough of a height difference between my heel and my forefoot in order to feel comfortable. I think I can categorically say that while this is a comfortable casual lounge about boot, it is not a boot for standing around in all day and definitely not a work boot uh, or even a boot to go for a long walk in. Moving on up, while staying inside the boot, there is no cork filling because there's no cavity caused by a welt. This is a stitch down boot and so does not use a welt around the outside of the boot. There is however a thin leather comfort insole made from soft uh, calf skin that's lightly padded with memory foam for comfort and it's not removable. As I said, this boot uses the stitch down method of construction in order to fix the uppers to the sole. In this method of construction, the uppers are lasted around the last and then flared out 
and the flared out edge is sewn directly onto the midsole. It is a 360 degree stitch down construction, meaning that the stitching of the uppers to the midsole goes all the way around the boot. The crepe rubber outsole is then glued to the midsole. The stitch down stitching is nothing to write home about. While structurally sound, it's not particularly good looking. However, you have to remember the price, which I'll get into, as well as the rough casual uses that I think you might put this boot into. Uh, otherwise, the stitching on the uppers is okay. The quarters are attached to the vamp uh, with a, a double row stitch, while mostly everything else is single row stitched. The toe box is totally unstructured and it's very soft and pliable, which is one of the comfort factors when you put the boot on. The heel counter is also soft, I'd say, and presumably is either a thermoplastic, like celastic, or a thin leather board or even cardboard. I suspect it's cardboard. It uses an internal heel counter, uh, and on the inside, I'm not sure you can see, it's covered by a piece of suede to give your heel some grip against slippage. The edges of the collar and running down the lace facings, it's covered by a rolled edge of leather. This is unexpected for a boot at this price point, quite sophisticated. I think I've already said that the tongue is ungusseted. However, it is the only piece of the uppers that is lined. Uh, and as this lining thickens the tongue, I find that it doesn't, doesn't slip over, which many of the tongues uh, in my other ungusseted tongue boots will tend to do. At the rest of the boot, vamp and shaft are unlined. I'm not sure this is necessarily a bad thing because it, it does not feel uncomfortable and does seem to breathe better uh, in, in our hot summers. There are eight antiqued brass eyelets and they are backed with uh, inset washers so they should not mark the leather in the tongue. The laces provided are a pair of flat woven cotton laces and, and I think suit the look of the boot. The upper's leather is nubuck. Nubuck leather is a corrected full grain leather. Uh, the, the most famous type of nubuck leather is the yellow nubuck leather used by Timberland boots. In this case, it's about 2.2 millimeters thick, which is about average for nubuck, uh, thicker nubucks. Uh, when I said that nubuck leather is corrected, I mean that they lightly sand or buff the grain side of the leather ever so slightly so as to create that slightly velvety, nappy feel to the surface. This creates a surface that is more resistant to scratching uh, than smooth grain leathers. Uh, in this case, it's a bovine nubuck that's rotated in a drum in water and then naturally dried and from the feel of it, I believe also lightly oiled. This will help to create a certain water resistance and what it also does is create a subtle patterning and show a difference in coloration as the oils move around inside the leather. In many ways, this is, the, I suppose, the, the ultimate pull-up leather. I find this quite an attractive leather because of the way the oils move around. Within a few weeks, it was starting to show wear and patina. However, what I don't like about it is the way the creases form very quickly on the vamp. And in one area on the right boot here, at the very top, there are some creases that are beginning to look like loose grain. Look, once again though, I have to remind myself of this as a casual kick around boot. Caring for nubuck is simple. I think regular brushing is a must. With this texture, I find that it picks up a lot of dust and you always know that because when you rub or stroke the boots with bare hands, your hands come up feeling a little powdery. Uh, the second tip is to apply some type of waterproofing spray before your first wear. Uh, anything you can use to waterproof suede should be okay for new buck. And the one that I use is Tarago's Nano Spray Protector because it's a reasonable mid-price. It will soak the leather as soon as you spray it on and darken it but don't panic because it will dry back to the original color. If the new buck uh, gets marked, you can use a suede eraser to rub off the marks, literally. And then if it spots, give the whole boot a, a light rub over with the eraser. Immediately after this, and also from time to time, I think, give the boots a brush with a stiff brushed uh, suede brush to clean up the light nap. Not the copper type, but the plastic type. I never saddle soap my new butt leathers. I think the waxes in the saddle soap can penetrate the corrected surface and make the nap stand down and look a little too shiny. Otherwise, it's a tough leather. Um, again, look at an old pair of Timberland yellow boots. They, they can take punishment. As for sizing, fit and comfort, 
I've already spoken about the comfort. At first step, it's pretty comfortable and the shock absorption is definitely good. Uh, but to be honest, after a long day, your feet might ache because of the flat nature of the sole and the lack of arch support. It's kind of like slippers. Your feet feel good in them, but you probably wouldn't walk around outside all day in slippers. The unlined uppers though, allows your feet to breathe and they are soft and supple despite uh, being over two millimeters thick. So your feet, I think we'll like them. In terms of sizing, the Huckbury website uh, equates a US 8 with an European 41. Now this is tricky. First off, my size measured on a US Brannock device is eight and a half. And I usually wear US Heritage boots a half size down in US 8s. My European sizing can be all over the place, but I measure between an European 41 and 41.5. However, if you place your trust on the Huckbury conversion, then I'd say to you to order in the size that you usually wear in US Heritage boots. So for me, uh, what Huckbury calls an eight is the right size. It's reasonably snug in the heel, uh, waist, and the ball of the foot uh, without actually pinching. And the rounded toe shape of the last gives me a good feel in the toe box without any toes feeling squashed. Now let's turn to value. On the Huckbury website, the link is below, they are listed at US uh, $225. This puts them in the lower price range of all service boots. And you can compare them to Thursday Captains at 200 or their Vanguards at 265. The Blake stitched Helm Hollis is 295. The Red Wing Iron Ranger, not as sleek, but certainly sturdily made, maybe even better made, uh, is 350. So in price terms, bang in the range and maybe even at the lower end of the price range for a boot like this. In value terms, what you get is an eco-conscious boot, if that's important to you, some comfort in the wear and shock absorption, uh, feeling more like slippers than rugged boots, uh, an interesting leather and reasonably well-made QC. Look, all in all, I think it's about bang on the money where the price meets the value in my opinion. Huckbury do have sales often uh, through the year as they uh, move inventory. So if you see these on sale, I think that would be a good pickup. And so to summarize, yeah, looks like a service boot, but not really a service boot. I'll be European and call it an ankle boot. <laughs> it's fundamentally an attractive casual boot that you can wear anywhere except to the most dressy occasions uh, or the most professional suit and tie offices. I really feel at home wearing it at home, kicking around in the house, relaxing, even lounging in front of the TV with my feet uh, on top of the lounge, don't tell my wife. Uh, going for walks around the neighborhood is fine and it's very comfy to do that. Stand around in all day, I don't think so. I have to get some sort of arch support insert. Price to value is about right and it's easy to care for. So there you go. I hope you liked the review and if you did, uh, please click on the like button. If you're not subscribed, click on that button as well. Until the next time guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.